Go ahead. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another Thursday night live question and answer at Upholstery on Broadway or Broadway Upholstery School. We go by many names. And uh, we really are glad you tuned in. We have a lot of people watching, and we're glad about that. So don't just throw those questions in anytime. We're going to be doing a couple of things today. I'm going to get to my questions in a minute about and update people on what's been going on here because there's always something going on. Oh, I do want to announce new classes right off the bat. My producer, Patrick, doesn't even know about this. May 2nd is the next classes. And guess what, folks? We're going to do a weekend class. So I know a lot of people have been asking me uh, about weekend classes uh, because we, we would teach the class during the day. So May 2nd at Lexington Arts and Crafts, and we'll have more information about that. Um, but um, did want to update on a couple of things. We've, we've got some questions and some comments that I'd like to get to almost right away. But later in the show, I'm a little excited. Uh, Jimmy doesn't, uh, didn't go on a hunt um, for a chair like we normally do. But Jimmy's going to come up here and help on a, on a chair that came into the shop. He's going to start the chair, uh, taking it apart for me. And it's a very interesting chair. It's a stickly. And I'll, I'll, I'll talk about that a little bit more after we ask Jimmy to come up, or a member of the studio audience. Oh, <laughs> we've got somebody eagerly, and he's got a sign over here. <laughs> Jimmy, Jimmy, That's a little Jimmy. late, a little late uh, uh, Jimmy. <laughs> Thank you for the excitement, though. We really appreciate it. <laughs> I almost gave myself a heart attack now. <laughs> calm down, calm down. You no, know, a lot of people wanted to come up here, but you, you're selected. Your sign's very original. <laughs> All right, well, let's get to some questions um, so, or some comments. So Lauren has commented on a recent YouTube video that we did, How to Convert Canning to Upholstery, and it dawns on me. Um, let, well, let me just read what she says. She says, this is exactly what I needed to see. I have six similar chairs. I started the first one, and the project is, is on hold till I work out how to put the foam and fabric with the nail head trim. I love that you went over the caning. I removed all my caning and patched the holes, <laughs> which is interesting. Yeah, you know, you did a lot of work. But I like leaving the caning for the next person to see that say, hey, it was cane, and maybe they want to go back to the caning. Who knows? That was laborious, of course. I will skip that step in the next five and do it as you've shown here. Thank you for all the tips on how-to videos. Will you be sharing the next upholstery steps of this chair? Sorry, that was kind of like... Some of the things really have to get out of here. You know, the customer's waiting for them. So all those have gone away. And um, actually, there are three ways that you can uh, do a cane chair, cane seat chair. The first thing you have to remember is on a cane chair that was caned, the height of the seat is kind of set to the flat cane. So be careful on how much you add. So I had, I, I don't know if it was these chairs. Let me just take a look at these chairs for a minute. I'm not sure if it was this one. No, it wasn't this one. I had actually six cane chairs come to me, Lauren. You had six too. And it came to me with an upholstered, with the caning was failing, so the customer had an idea for the upholster that did it last. And he made a two inch box cushion with welting. And he hand stitched, they took the time to hand stitch the bottom of the cushion to the caning. So what that did was it didn't really work because the caning failed completely because they didn't reinforce it. And also um, it was too high and it not only did it not fill right with the table uh, because it sit, they, the chairs sit around a table and it, they were bent wood uh, by the way which are really gorgeous looking chairs if you've ever seen them. Google bent wood chair and you'll see what I'm talking about. Um, but it, the height was too bad and, and it caved in so it really wasn't a good solution to the problem problem of the field caning and the customer didn't want to recane them so what I did in this case and this saves the the chair a lot on the um, that you don't have to tack or staple into the frame if you want to tr try to save as much of the wood as possible I had my wood guy make um, individual cut uh, oval shape and, and round they were so different from one another because they're so old but they were custom made seats to fit just over the caning and I upholstered, the, I upholstered the wood using a very thin one inch foam and they came out absolutely beautiful. The way I secured them, I just screwed from the bottom through the holes that are already there so there was no uh, problem with the wood. I didn't, I didn't touch the wood on these at all and I put cambric on them so you wouldn't, you wouldn't see anything hanging out. So 
that's how I solved it. So, and then the third way, so that's two ways. The third way would be to recane them. <laughs> and, but some people don't like the, the caning because, especially on seats, because they fail very quickly. So I guess that's a long discussion, a long comment on that. Do we have a li anything live yet? Um, no, not yet. So if you guys feel free to ask the questions. So we got Janine, who's been one of our early supporters. Thank you, Janine, really. Keep it coming, man. Keep the questions coming. Um, and, and we get, I think, our best output by questions that are asked. That's why the online classes, you guys, if you're watching this, we have a YouTube channel, Broadway Upholstery School. Please subscribe. But more importantly, I think we have an online class. And today, for instance, we had a class online. And um, there was a question that was asked that was very interesting uh, by the student. And I noticed that when I'm teaching YouTube classes one-on-one -on -one to the camera, I'm forgetting a lot of things that are taught to me. But with the student, like today was a perfect example. And uh, the question was, why is there a separation between the seat and the deck when you have a loose cushion? And the, the, the answer is that you want the seat higher than the deck, and the seam is where the fabric seam is going to be put. So that it allows you to stuff out the front of the seat in order to get a pitch on a cushion. So um, I overlooked the, the whole reason why we were doing that. And that's why the online classes, I, I tell you, if you guys sign up, and I think Janine is watching these classes, right, Patrick? Yes. Janine, got, at least you got the yearly subscription. Janine got the yearly, the yearly subscription. I know, Janine, and I, I, wanna, I want you to... I think. I'm not, though... Uh, well, if, if you're going to... You go she on, did. Uh, brought, did she? I'm brought, not sure. We're not sure if Janine did, but it, it's a good value. I mean, uh, go on to the broadwayupholsteryschool.com, right, Patrick? Right. And check out the online classes, and you'll see... Um, what's up there now is the content unbelievable even I can't see I write down what we talked about during the class and You're going to get those uh, descriptions when you when you look before you buy anything look You're going to see so much content like today what we covered in the class was a fox edging Rubberized horsehair how to do a blanket stitch and how to pad out an entire seat and all their questions about the seat and the deck came up during that and and Folks, you know if you've been upholstering anything, the seats are the most important thing on a piece of furniture. That's what gets most of the weight. So a lot of the attention is drawn to that. So uh, that class is going to be coming up when, Patrick? That's still... Which one of the other class share is already up. Oh, yeah, you guys. Uh, well, that's up now. And, you know, it's never too late to go on to join up. People, you know, join up anytime. And you can get a single class or the yearly subs subscription. We recommend both. And I want to announce something really cool. Erica, yeah. one of our other, uh, well, she's on now. She just joined. Hi, me. Erica. But she just bought another custom video from us, which it seems really cool. Okay. So I, I don't know if you want to know it now. I want to. Yeah, it yeah. Let's, we can we can ask her what the custom video is going to be. So this is for a mid-century long couch. Yes. That's going to be a good one. So we we have her other one, which. We already, what was the status on that one? The, the we status, update her every week on it. I know it's taken a while. It's funny, I've got a sofa, it's in storage now, and it's the, it's a perfect sofa for that French style settee that she has. And it's actually a mid-century too, but not the type of mid-century that she's talking about. I know that I, she's going to have to send a photo. She sent a photo along, Patrick? She's on now, so just tell, uh, tell her now. Tell her, send, her send uh, Erica, send a photo. Email that, us. Mid-century, um, that you, you, you You've, you've given us uh, the opportunity to do that for you. That's great. Thank you. Just I, again, I, I should tell, remind people if they do get the custom videos, they have to be patient with us because I'm waiting for that project to come in the door. Based on what you get from working the shop. So. Right, and and I have that first sofa. It's in storage. The customer has still not picked the fabric out, so I don't know what's going on there. But we'll we'll get to it. I mean, they're giving us a deposit, so we know we're going to do the job. So, but thank you, Erica. Um, so we also another comment though, I'll let Michaela know. Okay, we got a comment, Mick? Yeah, um, this is from Enoch. Enoch, where's Enoch from? I'm not sure, but he says, Wow, Kevin, it's a privilege to see you live. You're such a great gift to us, the younger generation. Thank you for sharing your years of wisdom with us. Well, that is 
Is that it? Yeah. That's a wonderful compliment, isn't it, Jimmy? Did you mention me? Yeah, I didn't hear me. Oh, well, Jimmy, you'll be seeing. Well, he can, he's, I think it's the first time he's tuned in. Oh, oh okay. And I all think right. he's going right. to get a taste of the, uh, Jimmy in a little while. We're going to have Jimmy come up and try to help me with this interesting project here live. But I did want to mention something about the YouTube channel that, Enoch, if you've gone on the YouTube channel, we were very surprised, and I think my son was the most surprised, to see that the, uh, the, the main people who are watching it, between 25 and 35 on that, right, Patrick? Yes. 25 and 35. So we're 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 maybe saving a whole industry of reupholstering, which I think is I I've never seen in my 42 years. I've never seen an act, the activity that I'm seeing now in the reupholstery world, and I think I have the solution to 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 saving furniture and to making upholstering a little bit easier than than some people. I I have a technique that I use that teach. Uh, the approach is good. I think Jimmy can vouch for this, and I think, but but the actual methods and techniques that I use, may I think, make it easier to understand. So we have over 120 videos out there on YouTube, wow. and we do like to have a little fun, you know, too. You know, we're not all serious, and we, we the whole idea of that though is to, to give people a, 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 to approach it, you know, because it can be daunting, right, Jimmy? The upholstery can be daunting if if you. It can be, you know, especially when you think I should be doing this, I should, I want to advance, oh God, now I have another project in front of me today instead of having going through three things and now you're only actually going through one. And you might have a problem that you come into that you can always reference Broadway Upholstery School on, on the YouTube and see, I guarantee, I, I almost, we covered so much, I bet you could just research on our channel to see, like for instance, how do you tie a slip knot? Well, you go on our channel, Broadway Upholstery School, you put in Slipknot, and I think there are two videos on that. Or you, how to put in a button. I think that we have two or three videos there, you right. know. So, so we have... We, Some you of those things I would like to do to get, it's, it's good to say you, you're seeing how it's done, how the buttons are made. Yeah. But I think also practice and theory are, for me anyway, a good way to really put yeah. it, to say, oh, okay, now I got it, now I know what you mean. Yep. And, and you know, when I was learning, I didn't have a video that I could go to. Oh, God, no. I had to go to a corner and sometimes sob lightly that I wasn't understanding what I was doing. I didn't have a video to go to. You know, on the job training when I was doing it was a little dysfunctional, you know. What do you mean you don't know how to do that? Are you stupid? That's usually yeah, what that, I went to. That was always, the, that was always like the rah rah motivation speech <laughs> at 8 in the morning. Well, anyhow. So I survived, but I got a good. I, I had a good couple of mentors uh, that really helped me along, and I, I really I really love them for that. So let's get to Janine. Um, she says now this is about the live classes, and she's talking about our favorite our favorite uh, participant, and she says, oh, that idea of going around and finding chairs so sounds like so much fun. Isn't that a nice comment? I think she's talking about you. But then she says, I love the idea of you upholstering the chairs. Jimmy finds and selling them. Can't wait to see them. How about that? Let me, let me just say that again. Well, I'll explain. I understand that. Yeah. That's for the new thing that uh, we were talking about. It's coming to the new, not, it's not going to be a paid class. It'll be free on YouTube uh, series that we're going to be doing, furniture hunting. So that's what that is. Very good. That's what Janine's looking forward to. Looking so, forward to so that's the new series, YouTube series coming up. Jimmy's search. Once he finishes, Jimmy finishes his next class. We'll be doing that with him. And also, I want to. I think it's nicer. So I yeah, to, let's 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 hurry up this chair then. I think. Yeah, <laughs> there we are. I wanted to mention Bernice, uh, Bernice's slipcover class, which is coming up, Patrick. Well, she'll be on. Well, her introduction is next week. On YouTube. On YouTube, the class uh, still being edited. It'll go. It's the next thing that I'm working on. So. She's excited. She was she was talking to her friends about being. Uh, she last year she scuba dived. She's she's in her early seventies. I want to hang out with her. And she scuba dived, and and she did great scuba diving. And all her friends wanted to know what was next for Bernice, and she answered, "I want to be a YouTube star." So I suggested that she um, get a scuba dare on. I know the guy at the the, the aquarium down there in Boston, New England oh, Aquarium. Oh, you do? Sure, I know the manager. 
And I, I said, would you, would you go into the shark infested tank with your scuba gear and maybe sew up a cushion or something? That would get the attention of the YouTube audience, wouldn't it, Jimmy? Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> I, I had not even fathomed that. You know what she said? She said, as long as the fabric You're is scotch guard. You're going to get off those no. drugs. They're bad, no. for, they're bad no. for you. No, she said, as long as the fabric is scotch guarded. She's oh, up she, for that, Jim. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Uh, I, I love to see her in a scuba. Uh, I think of Lloyd Bridges, that's what I think of. <laughs> what was that show, Sea Hunt? Uh, that was a great show. Yeah, I only saw some of it. I you're, you're dating yourself, Jimmy. I don't know. I, many, I, I know. I know. I don't, I don't think I'm many about... I'm in the rocking chair stage in my life. So. The rocking chair stage? Well, yeah. It's kind of like a little bit of rock and back. Like <laughs> Not a full, complete rock. Do you think maybe you can upholster your own rocking chair and just drift off? If you off? give me the kid, I can do it. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, the other thing that we just started today, I had the idea is, you know, because I've been doing this so long, I still have all my fingers. I have a little arthritis, but I still have speed. And, and we did a chat, we did a little slip seat today. And we're going to, on YouTube, just for fun, I'm going to try to upholster as fast as I can. So we, we did one today, we did a repair on a needle point. And um, so that's going to be come up. So watch out for the fastest upholsterer, and that's going to be coming up. Um, and then we got some really exciting news about, um, we've had so many people uh, asking us about supplies, and we do have Fundamentals Upholstery up where you can get some leads on supplies, but we're convinced now that because so many people are asking us that we're going to have to, we want to start selling supplies in our store at Broadway Upholstery School. Um, we're going to be offering all, all types of upcoming, so just be patient on that. Um, I think it might streamline for people out there who are just starting out or even if, you know, I, I get seasoned people still asking me where they can get good supplies. So I think it will help anybody that's watching the channel, uh, just help them get the proper supplies that they need. And uh, the other thing too I wanted to bring up before I bring Jimmy up here with this chair is the, uh, the forum on Facebook, Broadway Upholstery School Forum. Feel free to join in on that. That's a lot of fun. And Jimmy has been uh, one of our main supporters in that. And Pam, we haven't heard from Pam in a while. Um, no, she, she was on last week. Oh, she was on. Yeah, she posted on, on last week. She posted. Post your, your She's projects. the one who's looking forward to Bernice's. Uh, so oh, right, well, right, so. right. And and amazing. I think I mentioned it. Is there any more questions before I go? Well, well I want to show you this. I want to follow up here. Eric has emailed this picture to us. This is the this is the uh, okay. next project for a custom video. Okay. Up here, Dad. Okay. You got it up on the camera? No. Oh. <laughs> oh, we're going to do it the old fashioned way. You said you can stand. Hold it up. Oh, yeah. This oh, is a technology, Patrick. This is a traditional. I had one of these about a couple of months ago. It's too bad we're getting this we now. We picked that up, remember? Yeah. You remember that, Chad? Yes. But you look at the. This is a mid century with two seat cushions and four back cushions, okay? And it's got the traditional tight arms, the tight seat, and tight cushions that it should be. Okay, but if you look at the back cushions, even the seat cushions, sometimes I've seen them four on the seat cushions and four on the back, or one long bench cushion. I think the way they have it is probably the way it was, let me just take a closer look at it. I'm not sure if that's the original material, my guess is that it isn't. But um, this, is a, this is a very unusual piece, Erica. You've got a treasure here because this is a long sofa. Usually you don't see them this long. This is a four-seater. So as a four-seater, you've got two people on one cushion, two people on the other cushion, but you have the four back cushions. So that, so that invites you to sit down as four people, right, Jimmy? Ten feet, Kevin? I'm telling you, not quite. No, I think this is probably 100 inches. How many feet is that, Jimmy? Quick. Eight. Eight. A ten-foot is... I've never seen a ten-foot. That, what, so. what, that one that we picked up, where was it, in Boston somewhere? I thought, it felt like that was a good... Yeah, that was, that was about... Eight. That usually you see the biggest I've seen is 102 inches. Wow! But this looks to be uh, Erica. If you could measure that for us, if you're in front of that, that would be great. Let us know how long that is. I'm going to guess, Jimmy. I'm going to let's, let's have a contest. Okay. I'm going to guess at 98 inches. What do you say? I'll go with that too. I'm not going to bet. <laughs> the only the reason I'm saying it doesn't if it was. <clears throat> now I'm going to say outside arm to outside arm. That's the measurement. 98. So we'll see if Erica can get back to us to okay. see if that's... Well, she says that she wants to change that the cushion to all one cushion. That's what a bench cushion. Oh. And so also, it says that actually it came from, it says a, a custom piece from 1960 that comes from Boston. You're kidding. Yeah, it came from an estate of a designer in Boston. No now, kidding. How about, how about a better idea to make them two pillows instead of one big one? 
Well, it already is two pillows, Jimmy, on the seat. No. Oh, it is? Yeah. No, no, but I'm saying like one and then one. Well, it's interesting, the designing of a piece, right? So there's a couple of things I, I can mention on a bench cushion, which you have to remember when a bench cushion's a harder, a long cushion's a harder. The longer the cushion, mm -hmm. the more difficult it is to sew. And then what that means is that you're gonna, you may get more puckering or more wrinkling in a long cushion. The filling's important too. Um, so she should keep that in mind. Erica should keep that in mind. What, uh, so the, it would be a lot, so you, when you do something like, let's say it was the eight feet, that would be so much stuffing initially to make it what it what initially is going to be, but there will be some adjustments like down a year or two down the road because it's all done. Yeah, you, you always have to do some self-maintenance on all cushions too, okay. to keep that in mind. But a bench cushion is a little bit higher maintenance. Okay. So another thing about bench cushions, you may have to clip the ends if you're going to do a bench cushion because sometimes when you sit on them, they, they tend to rise up on the ends. But we can talk more about Erica, that. Erica said it is 98 inches. <gasps> Jimmy. Jimmy, okay. so, so what, what do you, do you want? Do you want, do you want a <laughs> chocolate frosted donut or would you like a jelly donut? 98 inches exactly, right Erica? How about that, huh? And this was not, she didn't call us before and say anything like I was going to put this up or anything like that. Anyhow. Got a call up. Enoch is from Ghana. Ghana? So we really were reaching out to Ghana, everyone. isn't that where uh, uh, Patrick? Uh, Ghana. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, so yeah. he's been he's been looking through the library of uh, videos. Oh, that's videos. wonderful, and and uh, that is we love the, we love the support from every continent. I think is Belgium, Ghana. Yeah, yeah I think else, uh, else? Uh, Australia, Africa, Australia, Europe, of course, Canada, uh, North America, South America, Patrick. All over. I think we've been all over. You gotta take a tour then. Yeah. We gotta, go yeah, on the road. we gotta we gotta go on tour, Kevin. Yeah. Okay. We'll bring, we'll bring some chairs, maybe a sofa. You know, just break out the fabric and start doing the. the uh, I wanted to get to something else here. Uh, we breached one million views on YouTube. We're very proud of that, and and it seemed like we got one million, and then all of a sudden it stays 1.0 m is what it is how it looks like when they send you the analytics on YouTube. And for a long time it was 1.0. Then all of a sudden I realized, wait a minute, they don't click it. I think they go, Patrick. Now there's 1,013,000. Pal, we need to get that silver play button. We but, need, need 100,000 subscribers. Come but on, Patrick tells me now, he's more involved in YouTube than I am. I don't know. What do I know? But he tells me that the subscribers are more important. And so. The 1 million views is great, but think about it, if we only had 10% of 1 million, 10% of 1 million, Jimmy, is what? What? 10% of 1 million is what? It's 100,000, right? Right. Yeah, sure. Thank you, Professor. <laughs> I have a good, like, well, 1% 1, 1 on would, be, would be, hold on a second. Well, speaking of which, we're almost at 8,000 subscribers. We're almost at 8,000, and we're happy with the 8,000 subscribers, believe me. But if every one of those people who view, let's say, Two people went on twice, you know, let's say 500,000. You still, the numbers uh, should be more, I think. I think we should have more subscribers. But I can tell you that when I go on YouTube, I don't think about subscribing even to some of my favorite channels. Isn't that terrible? Like Columbo. Oh, like, I do a lot. I do a lot of I did subscribe to Columbo. I do a lot. I do a lot. Of, if I really, if I'm into the subject matter. Do you subscribe, Jimmy? Yes. Now, do you see, when you subscribe, Jimmy, do you do it as a support of the channel or just to get notifications that a new channel, a new, a new, uh, you know, show went up? No, I mean, I do it because I, I like the subject matter. Right. Yeah. But anyway, this way, everyone has furniture in their house, so. Yes. That's right. That's true. <laughs> so, but I mean, the other subject matter is, uh, you know, we finishing or um, other things that I kind of say, yeah, geez, yeah, let me see what this is all about. And so um, we got another question here uh, that I'll comment. This is, we got a lot of comments from a chair that we did. It was the 1860s cowboy chair, we called it. Now, we, we, why do we call it the cowboy chair? Because when we were taking it apart, um, we found a, a label on a piece of burlap, and it was from Kansas City, Kansas. This is in America. I have to keep saying USA now because we got so many other people who are watching us. And we happened to know that that was a hotbed for gunslingers and cowboys, right, Jimmy? Yes, I remember About that. 18, you remember that? 1860. Wow, he's, <laughs> he's an old guy, older than I thought. Yes, yes. We actually used the oil from the uh, Wizard of Oz for me. <laughs> 
<laughs> I don't know what that means. Uh, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah, we, we are young black and brown. <laughs> so that, <laughs> so that we, we Patrick did a great graphics on that. He's got you guys should go on and look at Broadway Poultry School YouTube channel to see that he's got. Uh, what does he got here? He's got a picture of an old saloon, looks like, and he's got an arrow coming out of one of the windows to the chair that I'm upholstering. And up at the top it says 1800s cowboy or something like that. But, but see, we like to have fun because I think the approach is good. That was a very difficult chair, as I remember, to upholster, too. Um, I don't know, I wasn't here for it. No, Jimmy, I did this on my own, but you, you weren't learning. You know, people don't learn as much as those online classes that you learn a lot on. So, and so I have another question, another comment on that to you, YouTube video. They said, oh, you are a good teacher. Thanks for transferring your knowledge. And another great compliment. Thank you. Hey, I think, why not? I mean, um, I think upholstering is a wonderful trade to get into. I think for a hobby or, or for a business, if you get good enough and you're skillful in marketing and all that, I think it's a great uh, career. It could turn into a career. And uh, I really promote it. Um, one of the biggest promotions I give is that how much I think I'm saving the environment, Jimmy. Yeah. You know, you look at a sofa, Jimmy, right? An average sofa, like that sofa for Erica, is 98 inches long, right? How many feet is that? Quick. Eight. Eight feet. Eight feet by, let's say, two, two feet. Two feet, right? That's 16 square feet. I want to hear something really cool about Yep. Enoch, who posted another comic. He has an upholstery training school. Where? It must be in Ghana. He has his own upholstery training school? Yeah, so he said, pleasure soon. He says, soon. Soon. So, wow. so he, he must be experienced. He's going to send some pictures. Oh, yeah. He, we Please uh, keep in contact with us. We, yeah, he said he'd be a pleasure to host us. He wants us to go over. That would be cool. Wow, yeah. Ghana, Jimmy. What do you think? Would you would be in for a trip to Ghana? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I don't get up much past the city limits now. So <laughs> Are you allowed outside the city limits? Yeah, yeah. Darlington. <laughs> yes, I, I can be. I can stay out beyond when the streetlights come on. So I was trying to make a point about. <laughs> yeah, not many people know that reference either. Yeah, I know. <laughs> the streetlights are on. You should be home. That's right. There you go. The, so 16 square feet of, for a sofa, right? Um, I hope I'm figuring this right, but that's 16 square feet that would have been in the landfill, right? Yeah. So as an upholster, we're upholstering, reupholstering, we're saving the environment. That's the way I look at it. So I'm very proud of that. And now, one more question somebody had, and, and um, I can't think of a better compliment than this. And uh, she says, I have a sewing school. Can you help me set up an online class? And uh, this is a question for PBK Films, which is Patrick. Patrick. What do you think of that question? Is that something that you could do for somebody? Uh, I'll tell you, what, we're still learning it, even though it seems like we. <laughs> we Where is this young lady? Well, uh, we, we we don't want to reveal that quite yet. Definitely okay. go to uh, check out what we've done on ours first to get some ideas. You know. Right, and the best thing to do is to buy a class, really, to see if you guys have a. There's the shameless plug. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> it's true. If you want to see what how to do it or how we're doing it, I mean the equipment that we have is top notch. I should say that right we, now. We we and, and the way that we spent a, quite a bit. We did, but a way to test that theory, Patrick, is they go on to see some of our oldest YouTube videos. Right. And I was thinking about taking some of those down, but I think Erica said, "Don't do that because we want to see how it evolved." Right. And so when you go on the YouTube channel, look at the old ones and look at the new ones and see what the difference is. We've learned a lot. We've learned a lot, and I think you guys you guys can learn too. And if you want, if you're local and you're somebody that has a school or another upholstery shop or whatever. Well, I actually, now that you say I know who left that comment, and uh, I can definitely help them. Right. Because okay. they are yeah. local. <laughs> it has to be local, I guess. And we can't, I don't know if we can travel to Ghana unless somebody wants to sponsor the team to go to Ghana. It would have to be a sponsorship, Jimmy. I'm looking at Jimmy because... He, well, he, we could have a bake sale. I don't know. How uh, I don't know. I'm not too good at those fundraisers. Never yeah, happened. Yeah. Oh, I'll duck it into that. I remember Looks like you, I'll have to carry the load again. <laughs> I remember back in elementary school when we had a bake sale. So you, you brought a certain type of cookie that got me uh, bullied for Well, weeks. you know, I might as well reveal to people. So poor Patrick, he's, he's one of, how old were you, Patrick? Uh, I was in first grade. He was in first grade. Jesus, and the teacher said, make something. He's carried the battle scars that long? <laughs> some, uh, some Still haunts me. 
He said, make something, the teacher said, make something unusual that people will talk about it, people will buy. So what did you make, pot rind? Blueberry cookies. <laughs> Jimmy? You don't wonder why, yeah. I, you know what? what? You, could, you could have made like a nice cakey brownie or something, or well, maybe like a Toll House brownie or something. I have to say, they didn't come out too good. I didn't realize <laughs> that the blueberries would run so much and that the whole cookie was a blue cookie, so... It wasn't that attractive. So, so were the cookies kind of like a science project later on? No, it was not a science project. I, I don't like that remark. I, I baked those cookies with my own hands. <laughs> yeah, it, and it shows. Oh, yeah, with security. <laughs> security. <laughs> Anyhow, well, I guess that's going to do it with, with these. I think we're going to ask Jimmy to come up now with this project. You've probably all been wondering about this. Looking at this baby here. Yeah. This is this this is interesting. So, um, tell me about this. Well, the customer brought this in to me. Okay. And and I immediately saw this was a stickly, a stickly piece of furniture. Stickly is made by the finest manufacturer furniture manufacturer there is. But there was a there's a tragic story, Jimmy, to this chair. Oh. The tragic story is that um, the person bought their house uh, local, locally in mm -hmm. the 80s, and what was left was, and it looked like an upholstered side chair. It was all covered. This was all covered. So for a long time, she had it. She didn't do anything to it. She kept the chair. She thought there was something about the chair that she liked. Mm -hmm. And then one day, she took the covering off, and what it exposed was a stickly piece of furniture. Stickly. Which she didn't know of. I know. She was quite shocked. And the, the, the sad part, one of the tragedies of the chair is that whoever did it took there were arms here, Jimmy. I was and wondering those why arms are no I think you were taking them us. off. They're no longer with us. You're kidding. So, but believe it or not, the chair, I, I'm not sure about the re, if it retains its value without the arms. But one thing I, I was really impressed with, if I turn it this way, Jimmy, this is still a solid piece of furniture, even, with, even though the arms were removed. Who knows why that person did that? And then the other thing he did now this they didn't like to put their arms on the rest that's what i don't think they knew what they had no they, I, they, I, I tell you if you had an original stickly which this is with the arms right okay you're looking at about a five thousand dollar chair no way uh, way way this is an original and and, and now who who makes it stickly stickly okay gustin stickly is the is the furniture maker name now if you turn this over like this i don't know if you guys can see this but usually the label is back here, and it's 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 stamped on label. Right. They must use like a heat a heat stamp to stamp it, right? But this person also did something. I guess the double tragedy is that he refinished it and took off the label. He said, "Oh, that label. What's that label doing on there?" And took did the label off. One of those weekend carpenters. That's I what don't they call know. But yes, he so was that's a weekend the tragedy. carpenter. So now here's the, here's some good news. He didn't remove the original seat. He didn't remove the original seat, and there's still some evidence of how it was finished. Okay, so what I'm going to ask you to do while I'm blabbing away here, I'm going to ask you. I don't get the blab. Oh, uh, you can, you can blab. There was but, something. But the there? camera will be off. When we I do that. have some questions for you, people. No, nobody, no, no, nobody ever. No, that's okay. <laughs> I got used to that. I'm used to it by now. Jimmy, this is called a drop-in unit. This is not attached to the frame. So what I want you to do is unscrew these screws on the bottom here to detach it from the frame. That's your first assignment. What? Yeah, it's detachable. You're kidding. No. No. There is my antique screwdriver for the antique chair. And while Jimmy's doing that, I'm going to try to get some background information on Stickley while he's doing that. So let's just Google. I love Google for this reason. I want to get the dates of the Stickley. Um, now, if you guys ever cross, come across a piece of furniture like this, please don't do what this person did. Do not take any of the wood away. Um, it's mission style furniture. And I'm trying to get some history. Gustav Stickley, here we go. Gustav right. Stickley was an American furniture manufacturer. He was a design leader, publisher, and the chief for the American craftsman style, an extension of the British arts and crafts movements. Arts and crafts, Jimmy, right? That, that's right now we've got to post a video of an arts and crafts. So he was born in 1858. He passed away in 1942. He was American. 
and the period was the arts and crafts movement. Okay, so um, this is an original. This is unbelievable. It's too bad that well we won't go on about it, Jimmy. Let's just get back. Do you to, want to shoot it to you later to on? Yeah. <laughs> if if I had the arms, I would be putting. I would have my woodworker helping me put them back on. But well, can you? What is this? What is the wood here? Well, this is a solid uh, oak. I think you use mainly oak. Wow. So Jimmy, we put the frame down for now. Put that aside. Okay. Now I want to show you some. The first thing you want to do is note the front. Do you remember that when you took this off, what the front is? Okay. They might not have it marked, but I believe this was the front, right? Yeah. Now it has a label here, though, right? Mm -hmm. So what I want to show people is the first, very first thing is, um, if we start taking this apart, which I don't want you to do quite yet, because I want to talk a little bit about it, but I want to make sure that that tape is in the back. Bring the chair back over here, Jimmy. I didn't see you take it apart. You were very quick. Only two screws, Kevin. That's good. Let's just drop it in again. Help the drop in here. Right? That's definitely the way it goes, right? Okay. Right? Yep. Okay, so when you take it out, I'm going to put it up there. Don't take the chair away yet. Okay. I'm going to lean it up there. This is very important, right? Because there are two X's on there. What does that mean? So you need to, you need to make sure you put an X there to make it the front. That you know that it's the front. Or put, you know, why put an X, put an F. Just oh, they did. F. Okay? And I even put down here. F. So I know that that's the front. It's just, you don't want any, any, once you take this apart, you don't, you know, you could go back and put it back in the frame. But it's, it's nice to get a reference like that. Okay, so now you can put the chair down. Mm -hmm. Nice to keep a reference like that. I want to point out a couple of things on this. <laughs> So we're, we're, we have to reconstruct this. We have to um, restore this because, I mean, it's a mess. It needs work. Uh, but we have to restore it to within as close to the original as I can get. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and the first thing that I want to show is that at one point there was hay. Look at that. The hay has, has fallen down into here. Yeah. Um, so it was stuffed out with hay. Which, there's no other hay except the, pot, the, the hay that fell into the chair. And when we took this out, we found just remnants of hay. There's no more remnants of hay anyway. So there was some batting. And, and, you know, Jimmy, sometimes it's a good idea to take photographs as you're going along. Mm -hmm. um, so you know. So you know. Um, but another thing I want to show, very important to the style that we're doing, right? When we turn this over like this, it's still left. It's amazing that it's still left. We have nothing of the top left on this. So there's a piping. This is called a waterfall front meaning that the leather work came straight around here without any interruption. So it came all the way around and then to the back, there's a seam. See the welting runs on the back too. This is very important, very important for us to have to make sure that we duplicate it. The customer is interested in restoring to the original. So what I want you to do, just to start, I want you to be very careful taking this off. Okay, but before we even do anything, look what I'm going to do. I'm going to, I'm going to mark on my leather work, I'm going to put another F right there, front. And I'm even going to do over here, I'm going to write right side. So I want you to be real careful. I don't want you just to rip this. Take okay. it off as it's... I want you to take each tack out separately and I'll show you the best tools to use for that. Right side, mm -hmm. right side. And then I'm even going to write left side over here. Because if I pick this up next week, I want to know where I left off, right? Mm -hmm. It's that important to, to mark this. Now I'm going to turn this over the, like so. And I'm going to ask you to take these out. I'm going to give you the tools to do that with. And if you have any other questions, you guys keep asking the questions. I find that people just like to watch and they forget to ask questions. And, and that, that night we have 100 views. <laughs> right, Patrick? Yeah, after. <laughs> yeah, no, the, the leather is very frail, Kevin. Just, right. Yeah. Right? Now, do the best you can at preserving as much of that leather as you can. If you can get that off in one piece, you'll be my hero. Really? Yes. So while Jimmy's doing that, I guess I want to do a little bit more research. I'm going to take pictures, actually, before I do the research. I want to take pictures of, of what we're doing. Uh, aren't, aren't cell phones great for this? Aren't, aren't smartphones great for this type of thing? I mean, um, Great. I'm going to 
take a picture down here of how much stuffing there is on the top of the springs. So another reason why we wanted to do this today, uh, not only because it's an interesting piece of furniture, but also I want to give people a taste of what the online classes are like um, and what you get out of the online classes. So, Jimmy, do you have any questions specifically related to, to this type of seat system or, or why? Well, you I know that the arts and crafts chair that I did is similar in that it was a drop-in unit. That's right. So was that a much cheaper way to go or a quicker way to put yes. furniture together? The answer to that is yes. It, if, if there's any alternative to, the best is the coil springs. Uh, and these are coil springs, but they're attached to a metal frame. But coil springs that are attached to webbing and then a hand stitched, I mean a hand tied with uh, ruby twine and then burlapped over with an eight-way tie, that's the best seat in my opinion. Um, but with the, with the arts and crafts movement and, and mid-century furniture, they had to come up with, I think they felt a better way what they felt would be a better way. Um, this unit, when we take this about stickly headed down the path with the alternative drop-in unit, and we'll show you when Jimmy, when we take this apart, we should get to it. Um, we will show you just how good of a job they did on an alternative to hand tying the springs. Um, they did the best job stickly. Other, other, other ones that I've seen, not so good. So Jimmy's taking a pot. Jimmy, can I take one of those tacks to show people the tacks that you're removing? Uh, yeah, let me get this one right here. This, this is interesting. Let me just show that. Just enough. Do that. you see on this a little rust? Oh, yeah. So. You know what the rust is from? The moisture from the Obviously, it was uh, probably not kept in a good spot. Good guess, but that's not it. Let me just no. get, get one here. So, right here. So there's nothing else rusted on this that I can see, okay. except the top of the tack. If you guys, I know I've mentioned this before, but I think it's so cool. So this could be, now I think, I'm not sure Stickley upholstered his own furniture, but I bet he did. So what, what you're seeing here is the saliva, the, um, this rust is caused by the saliva of the upholsterer. This is a number three, ounce tack, which is a very small tack, and they're going through leather, and uh, who knows, this could be Mr. Stickley's DNA all over this, you know, uh, so I find that very interesting, don't you, Jimmy? Oh, absolutely, Mr. DNA. I heard him sigh over there. I think oh, he, it was he always was hard very... work that I'm doing. <laughs> oh, is it the hard work? Oh, yeah. yeah Look yeah. at this. Doing uh, a good just job. About, just about there. Do you think you're going to be able to get that no, off one piece? Just, no. This is really, it's, it's dry. I know. So I guess it won't get that. Well, the, you know what, I was trying to find a date on this chair. It's not Mark, but I was trying to think when, um, I was trying to get a date as to what his first uh, grouping of chair furniture that he sold, what, what the date was. I bet, it, I bet people out there already have, have got the answer with their cell phones. Let's see, he was born in 1858, but he died 42. It doesn't say here. Uh, let's see. If we put in original, original stickly furniture, let's see what comes up there. Well, we've got a history. I, I think I want to read this because it's so interesting. Gustav Stickley marked his product with the phrase to assure customers that Stickley furniture was of the finest quality. Every piece made with honor and integrity. I'm looking for a date. Actually, Stickley Brothers. Stickley Brothers? Mm-hmm. I knew it was more than one. So, oh, we got a picture of... Wow, I, I can't believe what I just found, you guys. I found a picture of his factory. But I, I'm still looking for a date, but I bet I could tell by the picture. This looks like about 1920, 1930. Well, this is amazing, you guys. Let me just see if I see if you guys can see this. This is pretty amazing. Is it? Is that a good picture that you're getting of that? Look at the mustache on that fella. 
Jimmy, you gotta see this. Jimmy, look at his mustache. Wow. That could be you. I uh, know. <laughs> I'm gonna scan over here because there's a young man who looks like an apprentice and perhaps one of the brothers in the background. And this is really cool, you guys. They have, they have. The, if you see in the foreground, it looks like the apprentice, the young man's the apprentice. In the back of the older gentleman, and you see that rocking chair, that stickly rocking chair in the back? That's a very rare piece. This is cool. I can't believe I found this. So let me just scan a little bit over because I have this blown up. I'm going to scan over to this side. And even this is, oh, look at this. We got the chair very close to the chair that we have up on the, on the, on the foreground right there. Do you see it? See the arms? Jimmy, you got to see this. I got to show Jimmy. Jimmy, look at this. I'm busy here. <laughs> <laughs> that's, oh, nice. That's I almost like, like the chair that we have. Yeah. But I, I do want to show one more thing that's kind of cute and interesting. This must have been in, in, the, in the cold weather because all the men who are working there, we got about one, two, three, four, five men working in the shop. And they all have their coats hung up. On this, do you see that? All their coats and hats hanging. That must be in the wintertime. Isn't that, isn't that cool? So I'm so happy I found this. So uh, we love history associated with furniture. Uh, I'm just going to scale down here. I still, I'm still looking for a day. If anybody out there is quicker on the uh, research end of things live while we're live, if you can find out the date, you know, try to date the exact of that shop. It doesn't, no dates in here. You believe that? Um, I would love to know the exact date of this chair. It looks like it looks like that chair was even in that picture, Jimmy. You believe that? Well, we weren't Kevin, but here's no. the, here's, here's the level. So you got it off pretty, pretty much. Well, one piece. again, you know what? It's as dry as can be. Yeah, but I'm going to keep this for my when I when I start to do this. By the way, we're, we're using a full leather on this, not a real leather. Which but is what? What's the a full leather is a, an imitation leather, but but the imitation leathers today uh -huh. are so good. If, if you get a good one, you can get a bad full leather too. But now, a uh, full leather would be when they first came out of vinyl or naga hide, things okay. like that. That yes. was when they first came out, not so hot. But as they, they, the technology here with the, you, you can't even tell, the only difference is the smell. There's you, a smell with it? No, there isn't. There's oh. a smell with leather. They, that's the only difference though. Now I'm gonna place this, Jimmy, very carefully. I'm gonna put this on the table over here. Okay. Okay, and I'm gonna use that when I cut my full leather out. Uh, okay, so so that I what I do is I orientate, once I do something, I take a piece off there. I'm constantly in my mind orientating myself to, to what I did and, the, and, the, and I'm trying to, what I'm trying to do is get a feel for the piece. I'm, I'm looking, there's my front, that's what I do. I'm, I'm looking at, I'm taking my hand, I'm just trying to make sure that I got everything. And one thing that I see that's different about a drop-in unit is they've got a screw holding this on in the front to stabilize it and a big one of those square Oh, uh, nuts on the other side. You see right. that? Yes, I did see that. Um, and the other, Which I didn't see in my other chair. And the other things I noticed is that, you know, there are tacks holding the rest of it down, which we have to just secure a little bit more. You see how that's yeah. up. So I'm getting, I'm getting, I'm looking at it and I'm getting used to it. And then what I like to do is I like to put the front towards me like this. I don't like working from the side. I'm going to fold the chair for you. I'm going to get down more first. More work? Yeah, I'm going to get down here first and take a look and see how they've got this. Now, this is interesting. They've used felt. Now, felt as a batting, okay, we talked a little bit about felt as a batting. It's wool, actually. Okay. Wool. And, and wool, it's got some oomph to it, right? It's got some good oomph Endurance? To it. Yeah. What's interesting, though, is they didn't use horsehair. And I'm wondering why they didn't use horsehair. Horsehair would have been the choice. There's something else that they did that's a little different. They didn't use burlap. See, they're trying to be, they're trying to be different. Unique. Unique. That's exactly right. And they're looking for alternative methods. But to, to me, the burlap works better over springs. I'm just, I'm just saying. And, right. And horsehair works better over the burlap. But who well, am I? Well, I think that this is about what three inches. This, two, this three is, inches? A, this is probably about three layers of, or four layers of wool. So would they, that have been cheaper, cheaper to use? Maybe. Yeah, and that could have been a consideration Again, you know, when you talk about if he's yeah. that a unique product or unique, he wants to be that unique 
uh, a person with it, you're going to make this out of something. What else can you use? This is cotton, by the way. The top layer is cotton. Yes. Now, Jimmy, what I want you to do, I'm going to actually do this while we're thinning. Because this is all tied here. I, I may or may not use this because I love using the original material, but I'm not sure about this yet. So we're going now, to if you put, if you were to make felt, yep. you had to make the same thing again. Would you get the how, how good a quality? I wouldn't. Would you? I wouldn't do felt. No. I wouldn't do felt. I would. I would either do. Of course, we're we're not doing we're not doing this for a museum. We're doing this for a client. Mm -hmm. So, uh, bless you. So we have to. We're, we have perimi perimeters. We have boundaries of pricing that we have. We've already got a set price. Okay. So we, we can't spend too much money. But we're gonna we're gonna do. But I mean, would it be this. curious to find out how much is something like that would? Yeah. Be? Honestly, I don't know where I could get that type of wool these days, but we could try. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to undo this. Mm -hmm. But before I you do that, you want to separate the wool from the felt? Uh, no, we'll keep it all together. Okay. Look what I'm going to do, Jimmy. I'm going to take me. a piece of masking tape and I'm going to put an F there. I'm just going to lift this up here and I'm going to put that tape down. Now this is how finicky I am about this because I, I think this is such a unique project and I don't do this on every project but I think on this Not one. Not even on mine. You know who I so, am. So the, even, the, even the padding, even the felt gets a front in case I want to reuse it now. So what they've done is they've hand stitched this on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the hand stitching. You see the hand stitching there? Yeah. I'm going to clip that. I think they just did the corners. No, they did across no, they the did. front. Look at this. They did across the front what's left of that. Oh, and now they did a couple in here. Wow. Wouldn't it be great if we found a signature on this muslin that they used? Wow. Wouldn't that be something, Jimmy? Mm. I don't think so. We okay. can retire again. So Jimmy, I want you to very carefully put this over with that other leather. Ooh, it smells too. Well, that might be a reason why we might have to start new. We just want to show people um, you know, for a, I'm, I'm going to guess now with this, a uh, 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 hundred, this has got to be uh, maybe a hundred years old. Wow. Okay. So, um, so when you look at it, this, not bad for a hundred years old, Jimmy. No, no, yeah. considering some of the things I've brought through here. But look at how this is just worn right through. Yeah. Somebody is actually, is probably sitting with not good posture. You can tell. <laughs> so what I want you to do next, Jimmy. We are not going to save this at all. Oh, no, I hope no not. No value to saving that. Uh, but what I want you to do is take off the tacks holding that muslin down here as carefully as you can. Um, you're going to need a chair to sit down. Oh, here. no, I'm good this yeah, sure, be careful you don't, you don't you nail on a tack or anything like that. So while Jimmy's doing that, um, boy, we've got a couple of more minutes. Uh, any more questions, comments? That's not bad. So we had a um, very interesting and busy week this week. Um, we had 10 uh, upholstered uh, seats that came into the shop. They were actually Henderden. And Henderden is another fine name in the furniture industry. And um, those seats were a little different. Uh, they were upholstered seats and they had a base welt or base piping, some people call it, along the bottom, along the base. And around the front of the arms, um, they were glued, so we had to cut a little of the salvage out and glue it down. And they came out great. I wish I had a picture, but I don't. I um, actually wanted to show you, if you, before we, before we go today, I wanted to uh, show you a, a, a little bit of the students' work online classes, if you want to swing around here. Coming up, you guys. Coming up. Our online classes. We've got these two beautiful different projects going on. And Michelle, who you've seen in other videos, has done hand tufting beautifully. And Jimmy's working on this. And it's really been exciting. Jimmy, did you get that done already? It, it was only, actually, it was only uh, wow. really cornered. Let's swing around again. Wow, I can't believe you did that that fast. Yeah. So here's my process. Um, I'll just check your work to make sure there are no more, no more tacks, which are on. And I'm going to clean that up. I'll probably blow it out, you know, okay. with the blower. But I wanted to show. Look at this. Now this is in remarkably good shape. 
Isn't yeah. it, Jimmy? I see no rust. The I only see thing no... that's happened is that it's bottomed out in the middle. It's bottomed out a little bit. So we can fix that. There's a couple ways we can fix it. You can either bring your ends down with the burlap like that. See yeah. how that's going to come out even? Okay. And um, that's what the process is going to be. Let me just talk a can little bit about the process. Question, can you put something in between where the sagging is and boost it up? Well, I don't like to add especially metal, but actually that's why Jimmy is, it's good to have a student. What we will do is we're going to insert little pieces of cotton. We're going to like fist size cotton and okay. put them into the spring okay. in order to, and the very reason we're going to do that is to minimize the noise level that happens sometimes when metal hits metal on these springs. Okay. So, but, but it's in remarkably good shape. So I'm excited about getting moving on this project. I mean, I'm going to tighten these up a little bit and with the burlap it's going to bring this down, make it more even. And then with the cotton, we might fill in a little cotton where the gully is, mm -hmm. and, and then probably rubberized horsehair over that. Wow. And then maybe a piece of very thin foam or cotton over that. And I think that's it. I think, you know, if there's no more questions, I think, Jimmy, um, I think that that's another question, live question and answer show. Thank you again for coming. Hey, no problem. Aboard, and I'm glad that we picked you out of the vast studio audience. Yeah, it was kind of a tough choice. I mean. <laughs> I don't know what happened. I just need to get draw the draw the straw all the time. Thank well, you. Well, you know, you're, you're you're a very lucky guy. Yeah, yeah. Now, now, do, do I get any potting gifts or anything? No. Uh, you know, I have a I have a golden tack hair or a yeah, golden yeah, tack yeah, hair yeah, yeah, there yeah, somewhere. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you're for Ray first or that little, uh, you know, poultry on Broadway, the toy version, right? Well, that's for our special guest. Too. Oh, well, so I, I, but <laughs> until next time, you guys, take it easy.